A very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to Ansar Kari. So in this video, we'll be analyzing the important articles for 15th of April 2023. So let's start with the Hindu newspaper first and then we'll be shifting to another newspaper. So we see that Northeast gets its first aims and slew of projects. So Prime Minister, he has inaugurated super speciality hospital, three medical colleges in Assam. And he says that development becomes impossible when politics of dynasty, regionalism, corruption and instability starts to dominate. So that's there. And so uh, AIMS, it has been like inaugurated age uh, and a medical college in Pokrajhar, Nagao, and Nalbari, they were among the various projects that were inaugurated and dedicated to the nation in Assam. So here in this picture, you can see women, they are dancing at the Saru Sajai Stadium, which is there in Guwahati, a day after they set a world record for the largest Bihu performance at a single venue. So they are performing Bihu and it comes from the state of Assam. So you can see all are dressed alike. And yeah, so they have set a new world record. So drone technology ki agar hum baat kare, they can be used also and they can be misused also. Misuse ki baat kare, to we are seeing specifically in the state of Punjab how drones are being used to deliver weapons and drugs. Apart from that, agar hum unke efficient use ki baat kare of drone technology, so chardham pilgrims ke liye life-saving drugs drone ke through deliver kiye jayenge. And obviously that would be in less time and make things much more efficient. So, Pragati Shil Himachal, 75 years Ethihasic Varsh, 1948-2023, Himachal Divas, Ke Avsar Par Samas Pradesh Varsho Ko Hardik Shub Kaam Nai. So, here you can see ki Himachal Pradesh ki sari achievements yaha pe mentioned hai, you can just go through them. So in this picture, you can see a tall statue of Bhim Rao Ambedkar. And this was inaugurated on his birth anniversary, which was celebrated yesterday. So it's a 125 feet tall statue inaugurated in Hyderabad. So Ambedkar Panch Tirat, they are now on MP's pilgrimage scheme list. So five historical sites jo associated here with Bhim Rao Ambedkar, who is also known as the architect of India's constitution, they will now be added to the list of pilgrimage sites in the Madhya Pradesh government's Mukhya Mantri Tirat Darshan Yojana. So the five places, they become important for us. And... So the scheme, it enables citizens above 60 years of age, they can visit any of the listed sites on government expense. And apart from Ambedkar Panch Tirith, Sant Ravidas Temple, which is located in Varanasi, it has also been included in the pilgrimage scheme. So it's not that only in the state of Madhya Pradesh, mein jo pilgrimage sites hai, they are a part of this scheme. It's not like that. Uh, 
coming to the editorial sections. So a reminder about unfettered constitutional post. So two recent comments of the Supreme Court of India, it will have direct bearing on the concept of the independence of various constitutional authorities in India. So in a hearing of the Sena versus Sena case, the court it has expressed its serious concern over the active role being played by governors in state politics, observing key governors, they are becoming a part of the political processes and that is disconcerting. So subse pehli judgment mein just mein Sena versus Sena, it is related to Maharashtra. So in this case, the Supreme Court ne ye bola ki it is very disconcerting to see that the governor of a state, he or she, they are becoming a part of the state politics and earlier taking an important step in ensuring independence of the Election Commission of India, the Supreme Court divested the executive of its sole discretion in appointing the Chief Election Commissioner and the Election Commissioners by forming a committee to suggest suitable names to man these constitutional posts. So, just the way se pehle, uh, Chief Election Commissioner ke appointment, ke agar hum baat kare, to it was the executive who selected, but now, According to Supreme Court, a separate committee banai gai hai who will be suggesting the suitable names for these constitutional posts. So, ye do major changes, ya yeah, observations by the Supreme Court, we can say these are very recent ones and very, very crucial. So, there is a need for independent institutions that is very clear. Obviously, we are in a democracy, so it requires a system of checks and balances to prevent arbitrary use of power by the elected government of the day. So, having system of checks and balances so that the elected government of the day, hai, they are not arbitrarily misusing their power. And India's democracy provides for various constitutional authorities. So, we have to know these types of questions. You have to know which constitutional authority is, which statutory authority is. And constitutional authorities, ke agar hum baat kare, so that includes the Public Service Commission, Comptroller and Auditor General of India, the Election Commission of India, Finance Commission, the National Commissions for Scheduled Caste, Scheduled Tribes and Backward Classes. So, these are all constitutional bodies. Hai. And if you know their articles, bhi pata honge, so that would be good. And Constituent Assembly of India, it had recognized the need for such independent institutions to regulate sectors of national importance without any executive interference. So if we are talking about autonomy and independence, ki baat kar rahe, to obviously that is in a way we are saying that executive ki interference should not be in their functioning. And even Constituent Assembly of India had recognized this. So it is necessary that such constitutional bodies, they are provided with complete independence to enable them to function without fear or favor and in the larger interest of the nation. So it is towards this concept of clothing them with independence that the constitution provides for the manner in which individuals heading these institutions, they are to be appointed. So obviously, if we talk about independence, ki baat kare, unke autonomy, ki baat kare, the constitution mein proper procedure mentioned that the uh, head hoga of these bodies, of these institutions, usko kaise appoint kiya jayega. And obviously, this is why executive is process may interfere nahi kar sakta hai. So an essential attribute of the independence is about not being influenced by any vested interest and the ability to withstand the pressure from the executive. So while empowering the president of India to appoint all the constitution authorities, the constitution makers, they had kept in mind those institutions whose independence is of paramount importance to the country and the manner in which the independence of these authorities could be safeguarded from the whims of the executive. So definitely constitution makers ne is cheez ko apne mind mein rakha. And the constitution makers, they have used simple words like they shall be appointed by the president in the appointment of the prime minister, which is mentioned there in article 75 of the constitution. Then the attorney general for India, it is for artic in uh, article 76. Chairman and other members of the Finance Commission, Article 280. Chairman and other members of the Public Service Commission, Article 316. And then Special Office uh, Officer for the Linguistic Minorities, Article 350B. So, just like I was talking about starting, if we know the articles, pata honge, to that would be nice. And here, it is providing us with the articles also. So, Article 324 provides that President will appoint the Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioners subject to any law made in that behalf by the Parliament. And 
Then president also appoints the judges of the Supreme Court and the High Court. It is there in Article 124 and 217 respectively. For CAG, it is Article 148. Appointment of the governors, it is Article 155. And then other articles also use similar words. Similar words, matlab ki, shall be appointed by the president of India. So that's there. And it is uh, these articles, are they are in... Regard to the uh, chairman and the members of the National Commission for SCSTs and uh, the backward classes. So, Supreme Court, it held in N. Gopalaswamy versus others, uh, Union of India, that the president acts on the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers. So, if the Constitution is written that the president shall appoint, then it means that the president has discretionary power hai in appointment. It means that he or she would be acting on the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers that would be headed by the Prime Minister in all the matters which vests in the executive. And however, uh, this was basically upheld by the Supreme Court in the N. Gopalaswamy case. And however, in cases where the appointment of a particular constitutional authority is to be kept independent of the executive, so question arises whether such an interpretation would be in line with the thinking which prevailed during the relevant constituent assembly debates. So, now we have a little confusion created that when we talk about constitutional authority, mein appointments ki baat karte hain unke head ki appointment ki baat karte hain unke members ki appointment ki baat karte hain to jab hum bol rahe hain ki they need to be appointed in an independent manner to kya us case mein bhi hame jo ye cheez likhi hui hai ki shall be appointed by the president kya usko hame isi tarike se interpret karna hai ki that would be indirectly meaning that president would be acting on the aid and advice of the council of ministers or not so yahan pe ye basically kuch Topic of debate start ho jata hai. We can say this thing. And a question ye bhi hai ki kya ye thinking us point of time pe bhi thi jab constituent assembly debates ho rahe thi. So unrestricted and unfettered choice. So in the draft constitution we see uh, the article for the appointment of CAG, which is Article 124, it had provided that there shall be an auditor general who shall be appointed by the president. So ye constitution jab draft kiya ja raha tha to tab ye likha hua tha and while moving an amendment to this article so jab uh, is article mein amendment ki gai so this clause of article 124 after the word present uh, the words by warrant under his hand and seal be inserted so ye kuch amendment kiye gai and the constituent assembly it had discussed that the auditor general like the chief judges of supreme court is to be appointed by the president and therefore it is essential that the words by warrant under his hand and seal should be introduced so that was the debate and constituent assembly further discussed that the auditor general should be always independent of either the legislature or the executive. So, this debate was that in every situation mein unke independence is important hai ya nahi. So, he is the watchdog of our finances. His position must be made so strong that he cannot be influenced by anyone, howsoever great he may be. So, kisi bhi situation mein he or she shouldn't be influenced by anything because he is the watchdog of the finances of the government. So, from that point of view, I am very glad that certain amendments, they have been, they have been moved whereby the position of audit Auditor General has been made very strong. So, this is one part of debate, jo humne thoda sa cheezo ko or samja. So likewise, yahan pe governor ki bhi baat ki gai hai and baaki jo articles hain, unki bhi baat ki gai hai. So basically, independence um, ki agar hum baat kar rahe hain of constitutional institutions of these constitutional posts. So usko humne thoda we have understood it with the help of the Supreme Court judgment also. We have seen constitution ke articles bhi dekhe and abhi jo recently constitution mein jo humne introduction mein baat kari, jo do recent changes ke hai, they are very important. And coming to the, spe the special status, so it is pertinent to keep in mind that the constitution affixes the phrase by warrant under his hand and seal only to refer to the appointment to positions like judges, CAG, and the governors, where it assigns a special status to distinguish them from other constitutional positions. So, this is important to keep in mind that 
कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इस फ्रेज को मेंशन कर रहा है बाय वारंट अंडर हिज हैंड एंड सील सो यहाँ पे हम प्रेसिडेंट की बात कर रहे हैं सो so, ये सिर्फ रेलिवेंट है इन केसेस ऑफ अपॉइंटमेंट टू पोजीशंस लाइक जजेस कैग एंड गवर्नर्स सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अथॉरिटी सच एज जजेस ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हाई कोर्ट एंड द कैग ऑफ इंडिया दे आर टू बी केप्ड फ्री फ्रॉम द पोलिटिकल और एग्जीक्यूटिव प्रेशर and whereas appointment of agram judges and uh, election commissioners they have been made free from the influence of executive the need to set up a well defined criteria and procedure for the appointment of the cag of india remains keeping in view the intention of the framers of the constitution as evident from the constituent assembly debates also so the process of selecting a person to be appointed as the cag of india should begin by appointing a committee so agar hum सिलेक्शन ऑफ कैग की बात करें तो एक कमेटी कॉन्स्टिट्यूट की जाएगी जिसमें हमें मेंबर्स पता होना इम्पोर्टेंट है सो मेंबर्स वुड बी द स्पीकर ऑफ लोकसभा चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया एंड चेयरमैन ऑफ द पब्लिक अकाउंट्स कमेटी हु विल बी शॉर्ट लिस्टिंग द नेम ऑफ द कैग एंड अ पैनल ऑफ थ्री नेम्स शुड बी फॉरवर्डेड टू द प्रेजिडेंट फॉर हिम टू मेक द फाइनल सिलेक्शन एज एन आर्टिकल वन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो ये प्रोसीजर है व्हेन इट कम्स टू सिलेक्शन ऑफ कैग ऑफ इंडिया सो फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ द हाउस होल्ड्स द मॉडरेशन इन द हेडलाइन इन्फ्लेशन ब्रिंग्स लिटिल रेस्पाइट सो हमने ये बात करी थी दो दिन पहले कि the retail inflation it has come below the 6% level and headline inflation mein bhi hame moderation dekhne ko mil rahi hai so that is also a little respite respite and yahan pe hame difference pata hona chahiye headline inflation core inflation ke beech mein and uh, headline inflation mein we uh, basically hum फूड प्राइजेज और फ्यूल प्राइजेज दे आर अ कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ इट सो अगर हम कंज्यूमर्स के परस्पेक्टिव से देखें तो हेडलाइन इन्फ्लेशन उनके लिए ज्यादा रेलिवेंट ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है क्योंकि ऑब्वियसली फूड प्राइजेज एंड फ्यूल प्राइजेज पेट्रोल डीजल प्राइजेज का डायरेक्ट इम्पैक्ट होता है ऑन द कंज्यूमर्स डिमांड सो द पेस ऑफ द प्राइस राइज पेज बाई द इंडियन कंज्यूमर्स इट हैज ईज बिलो द सेंट्रल बैंक अपर टॉलरेंस थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ सिक्स परसेंट इन मार्च सो रिटेल इन्फ्लेशन रिकॉर्ड की गई एट फाइव पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स परसेंट एंड सो वी आर फेसिंग दिस थ्रेट या फिर दिस चैलेंज ऑफ हाई इन्फ्लेशन बिकॉज ऑफ द एस्केलेटेड रशिया यूक्रेन वॉर एंड इस वॉर को एक साल हो चुका है सो स्टिल इससे बहुत सारे चैलेंजेस नॉट जस्ट इन इंडिया बट ग्लोबली देखने को मिले हैं एंड नॉट जस्ट टू द कंट्रीज वच आर पार्टी टू दिस वॉर सो ग्लोबली दिस वॉर हैज इम्पैक्टेड द इकोनमी ग्लोबली एंड देन अगर हम पीक लेवल की बात करें ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन सो इट वॉज सेवन पॉइंट एट परसेंट इन अप्रिल टू एंड वी हैव सीन की to control the inflation rate rbi it has adopted the tight monetary policy so iske bare mein bhi that is a separate topic of debate jiske bare mein hum bahut zyada discuss kar chuke hain the relevant points we have critically analyzed that thing ki uh, inflation targeting is it the apt or the best policy for indian economy or not and apart from that आरबीआई की जो टाइट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी है एंड इन्फ्लेशन टारगेटिंग पॉलिसी है डिस्पाइट इंक्रीजिंग द रेपो रेट बाय 2.5 परसेंटेज पॉइंट राइट नाउ इट इज एट 6.5 परसेंट सो रेपो रेट को इतना इंक्रीज करने के बाद भी वी सॉ कि इन्फ्लेशन इतना ज्यादा कम नहीं हुई है सो वी हैव डिस्कस दैट ऑल्सो एंड वी ऑल्सो हैड अ लुक एट व्हाट आर द व्यूज ऑफ वन ऑफ द मेंबर्स आशमा गोयल शी इज अ मेंबर ऑफ द मॉन्शो पॉलिसी कमेटी ऑफ द आरबीआई व्हिच डिसाइड्स द रेपो रेट सो उनके जो व्यू थे रिगार्डिंग दिस थिंग कि क्या रेपो रेट को इंक्रीज किया जाना चाहिए एंड ये हमें क्यों हेल्प नहीं कर रहा है इन रिड्यूसिंग द इन्फ्लेशन रेट this we have discussed in detail and minutely and i have explained this thing you in very simple language so you need to see the previous videos everyday basis pe jo evolution humne dekhne ko mila accordingly we have discussed the things regarding the inflation so wo cheeze samajhna zyada important hai ye sabko pata hai ki inflation target kya hai tolerance band kya hai inflation ki agar hum baat kare to but abhi ke liye it is a respite 
कि we are seeing that uh, the retail inflation it is coming down and apart from that हमने ये भी बात करी थी कि we are seeing a divergence between the retail and the wholesale inflation so ये भी हम पहली बार हमें देखने को नहीं मिल रहा है but इससे हमें क्या समझने को मिलता है हमने उसके बारे में काफी सारी चर्चा करी थी so moving forward सो आई टी अमेंडमेंट जो आई टी रूल्स में अमेंडमेंट किए गए हैं दिस आर्टिकल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट सो द फैक्ट चेक इज दैट इंडियंस विल हैव लिटिल चॉइस सो जॉर्ज ऑर्वल्स आइकॉनिक नॉवल ऑफ नाइनटीन एटी फोर इंट्रोड्यूज रीडर्स टू ओशेनिया सो ओशेनिया इट्स अ कॉन्टिनेंट वर्च कम ट्राइल्स ऑफ ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड अ टायरनिकल स्टेट विद अ स्टेट मैंडेटेड लैंग्वेज न्यू स्पीक सो skipping this thing so this dystopian fiction it is providing inspiration to the ministry of electronics and information technology which has created powers to determine the fake or the false or misleading internet content about any business of the central government so jo recent changes kiye gaye amendments kiye gaye in the it rules that were ki pib would be deciding ki social media pe jo content post kiya jata hai if it is categorized as fake news or yeah, false yeah that is basically categorized uh, that is given this tag so that social media intermediary would have to take it down so isme ye concern bola ja raha hai ki it would be leading to centralization of the powers and obviously centralization of power ho jayega isme political element bhi aa jayega and yeah so As per the the wishes, whims and fancies of the government, we can say ki content ko remove kiya jayega by categorizing it as fake news. So the first claim for an open internet may be examined by having a closer look at clause number थ्री of the IT amendment rules, which contains these powers that were notified on April सिक्स So determination of fake or false or misleading information about the central government will be by a fact check unit of the central government so hence it will be acting as a judge in its own case so this is uh, the concern and yahan pe ye cheez ko mind mein rakhna important hai ki only that content which the government feels is against the central government sirf usi ko remove kiya jayega so no safeguards basically natural justice it requires transparent process where a person is provided a fair chance of a hearing and given a legal order so this is the simple idea of natural justice and no such safeguard it exists in the it rules which could result in a black box of the government censorship so it rules mein natural justice ka hame component nahi dekhne ko mil raha hai so that is another concern so coming to the claim of keeping indians safe the rules are for the benefit of any business of the central government so it thoda it is getting too critical but that is what the main concern is behind the recent amendments and precedent exists of the pib fact checking department itself committing errors for journalistic reporting that is critical of the public departments even when this was based on official documents so uske baad bhi if you say ki pib would be the fact checking unit so let's see how things are going to be there in future and then we are seeing that there are lack of details so to make a trusted internet such fact checking comes without any details on the composition of the fact checking body so hame koi information nahi hai on ki kon kon members hoga of this fact checking body jo ki decide karegi about the content being fake misleading or uh, uh, basically fake news jo term karne wale matlab uh, unke kya मेंबर्स क्या होंगे हमें कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन नहीं है सो थिंग्स आर नॉट ट्रांसपेरेंट सो दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंट एज अ डिजाइन ऑफ द रेगुलेटरी इंस्टीट्यूशन वन नॉट इंस्टीट्यूटेड और फॉर्म विद द फाइनेंशियल और द फंक्शनल ऑटोनॉमी मेक्स एम सब सर्वेंट टू द गवर्नमेंट एंड इवन द पॉलिटिकल इंटरेस्ट so this undermines the very basis of how trust in the government is built through scrutiny given that the executive branch it enjoys immense powers of the sword and force and supreme court ne is cheez ko explain bhi kiya hai in the r raja gopal versus state of tamil nadu 1994 case mein ki our system of government demands 
constant vigilance over the exercise of the governmental power by the press and the media, among others, and it is essential for a good government. So definitely, when it comes to press and media having a constant vigilance, the government अपनी पावर को कैसे एक्सरसाइज कर रही है तो दैट इज अ वेरी इसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ गुड गवर्नमेंट एंड ऑब्वियसली इट वुड बी स्ट्रेंथनिंग गवर्नेंस एज वेल सो हाउ एवर अंडर द प्रेजेंट सिस्टम द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट विल बिकम द सोल आर्बिटर ऑफ ट्रूथ एंड व्हेन इट सेज ट्रस्ट अस इंडियंस विल हैव लिटिल चॉइस तो हमारे पास कोई चॉइस नहीं होगी सो डेफिनेटली जो लोगों का ट्रस्ट होगा इन द गवर्नमेंट दैट वुड आल्सो बी हिट बाय द रीसेंट आईटी अमेंडमेंट इन द रूल्स so the basis of accountability finally the very basis of accountability lies in the remedial actions that are implemented so accountability ki baat kare to remedial actions ke bare mein we'll be talking about so this means neither an artificial measure of placation to demonstrate action nor a disproportionate or aggressive penalty so quite often when set in its proper context accountability as a phrase is used to correct the government and large corporations so definitely government ki accountability and even the corporations that is important to build the trust of people in the system so how will the it rules achieve it when they uh, they will give they will target the very institutions that work towards it so ye sochne ki baat hai and the very vision for the journalist is to report facts and speak truth to power so this leaves us to wonder what the slogan open safe and trusted and accountable internet means in a digital india so that's a good phrase and some clues may be provided by the rules of news speak which banned the use of the word free allowing it to only be used in such statements as this dog is free from lice or this field is free from weeds so yahan pe jab hum free media ki baat kar rahe hain ya free internet ki baat kar rahe hain to uska interpretation is different so we know about the situation in myanmar so the only solution for the troubles in myanmar is restoration of democracy so again it was uh, in news and Myanmar's military did it again so on Tuesday the junta which is notorious for which is notorious for its attack on civilians carried out air strikes on an opposition gathering in the rebel held Saigang region so Saigang region aapko yaad rakhna important hai ki it is there in Myanmar it can come uh, in prelims and recently air strikes ki gayi by the junta government and that was basically wahan pe kyunki opposition members they had gathered and this killed over 100 people including women and children so the national unity government the parallel administration formed by the opposition groups as well as the witnesses said ki fighter jet and a combat helicopter bombed the gathering which was celebrating the opening of an administrative office of the national unity government so ek parallel government chal rahi hai myanmar mein and that's there so ye attack kiya gaya and you know uh, ong san suu kyi she is in prison apart from that the junta it faces pressure from the resistant groups also but it still controls most of the country's population centers but control abhi bahut strong hai when we talk about junta so present approach of the generals is to hold on to the territories under their control while continuing to use disproportionate force against opposition fighters and civilians in the rebel held areas so definitely disproportionate amount of force used ki ja rahi hai and in this context uh, the issue of refugees then violation of human rights so all that comes up and even asean which is the association of southeast asian nations it had earlier proposed a five point peace plan urging an end to the hostilities and starting inclusive dialogue so five point peace plan mein what are the five points that becomes important for us to know but the generals they have refused to talk to the opposition and they are not ready to share power so the junta government which are generals and right now the incumbent um generals they have refused they are not going to talk to the opposition party the opposition members and uh, wo apni power bhi obviously kyun share karna chahenge when they are uh, like enjoying immense power 
एंड स्टेटस को हाउ एवर इट इज अनसटेनेबल सो जैसे चीजें अभी चल रही हैं ऑब्वियसली दैट इज नॉट सस्टेनेबल इन द लॉन्ग रन एंड रीजनल पावर्स दे के नॉट लुक अवे वेन अ थगिश रिजीम कीप्स किलिंग इट्स पीपल विद इम्प्यूनिटी सो डेफिनेटली दिस नीड्स टू स्टॉप एंड अ पीसफुल रेजोल्यूशन इन म्यांमार इज असेंशियल फॉर द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ इवन द साउथ ईस्ट एशिया एंड हेंस आसियान एंड द रीजनल पावर्स लाइक रशिया चाइना इंडिया दे शुड नॉट सी द सिविल स्ट्राइफ एज एन इंटरनल प्रॉब्लम ऑफ म्यांमार सो दे शुड यूज देयर इकोनॉमिक एंड पोलिटिकल क्लाउड टू फोर्स द जनरल्स टू स्टॉप द वायलेंस एंड एंटर इन टू टॉक्स विद द ऑपोजिशन सो अभी तक तो यही चल रहा है कि जो भी सिचुएशन है म्यांमार में द कंट्रीज द नेबर्स दे आर लुकिंग इट फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द इंटरनल प्रॉब्लम ऑफ म्यांमार सो द कंट्रीज दे आर नॉट टेकिंग अ स्टेप फॉरवर्ड व्हेन इट कम्स टू रिजॉल्विंग थिंग्स एंड लीडिंग टू रिस्टोरेशन ऑफ पीस इन द कंट्री बट इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इन द लॉन्गर टर्म इट वुड बी हैविंग एन इम्पैक्ट ऑन द पीस एंड स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द साउथ ईस्ट एशिया सो रशिया म्यांमार sorry russia china india they can come forward apart from the southeast asian countries and they can uh, basically make possible ki jo peace talks hain wo start ho jaye and the only sustainable long term and just solution for myanmar's myrad woes is the restoration of its democracy under a federal constitutional order so the first step to achieve this goal is to end the violence सो so, जब ये बिहू डांस से रिगार्डिंग वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड सेट किया जा रहा था तो प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉज ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट देयर एंड ही ग्रूव टू द बिहू बीट्स इन असम सो विद दिस हमें पता होना चाहिए जो भी फोक डांसेस है रिलेटेड टू डिफरेंट स्टेट्स दैट बिकम्स इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड कमोसा वी नो इट्स अ वुमन स्कॉर्फ टावल दैट इज अगेन इट हैज अ जी आई टैग एंड इट कम्स फ्रॉम द स्टेट ऑफ असम so india armenia will one day share a strategic partnership that invoice says this so increasing political cooperation between armenia and india must be institutionalized in a long term cooperation and definitely some day he wishes that both the countries will have a strategic partnership so we have very long historical ties and he calls this as civilizational partnership so apart from that uh, armenia recently signed a major defense deal with india for procurement of the pinaka multi rocket launch systems and their ammunition among others in a deal worth around rupees 2500 crores so defense deal this has been signed between india and armenia and in the backdrop of the expanding defense cooperation armenia will soon have a defense attache at its embassy here and it is this this is also new development so he was the and why he was speaking at the situation in south caucasus so south caucasus hame pata hona chahiye kaun si countries are a part of it so it comprises armenia azerbaijan and georgia and definitely aaj ke time mein us and europe they certainly remain important actors in the region but their influence we are seeing that it is declining in this region when we talk about the south caucasus so from the geography perspective hame pata hona chahiye about black sea se related jitne possible questions ho sakte hain caspian sea se related mountain ranges and rivers so all that is very important so nisar satellite jo ki ek or basically isme NASA and ISRO both are party to it. So NISAR satellite, it is going to map Himalayas seismic zones, so that 
uh, when it comes to our preparedness for the earthquake and any disaster. So we are best prepared to deal with any situation in future. So it will also serve as a valuable tool to give warning of land subsidence as scientists. They can use this data collected every 12 days and under all weather conditions to study the deformation patterns also. So specifically, the northern states, hai, wahan, uh, we are seeing this problem of land subsidence so it would be also helping us in that in knowing uh, about that which will be data collected by the NASAR satellites so this satellite jointly developed by ISRO and NASA so this is an important fact for prelims and it would be mapping the most earthquake prone regions in the Himalayas with unprecedented regularity so every 12 days data would be provided by it and land subsidence obviously Joshimat, Uttarakhand and as well point to places that are at greater risk from the earthquake also, so that again, the preparedness things, they are properly done. So it will use two frequency bands, the L band and the S band to image the seismically active Himalayan region. And further, which will be data produced, collect, that would be further used up by the scientists. And satellite, uh, the satellite, it is expected to follow a sun-synchronous orbit and it will be launched in January next year. So right now there is no shortage of milk in India and there is no plan to import the milk products. So this is coming from the Union Minister of Animal Husbandry Dairying and fisheries so there is no sort there is no shortage of milk in the country and the government is regularly monitoring the situation the demand definitely will increase we have but we have a huge untapped area right now and we'll try to tap that so we will manage it properly and there is no need to worry about the supply of milk because we are seeing key milk prices they are increasing and Recently, the Animal Pandemic Preparedness Initiative launched kiya gaya, and a World Bank funded animal health system support for One Health. So these were launched and their aim is at enhancing India's preparedness and response to animal pandemics and to create an ecosystem for better animal health management system. And definitely we know when it comes to livestock sector, it plays a very important role, chahe wo economy ki baat ho ya food security ki baat ho. Coming to the world page, Russian oil exports, they hit near three year high in March as per the International Energy Agency. So, first of all, we International Energy Agency. Ke mein hume aur pata hona and Russia ke jo oil exports, hai, they are hitting three-year high. So, this means that the sanctions put ke gaye by the Western world, they have not been proved successful. Because despite the sanctions, despite the price gap that Russian oil ke upar imposed, ki gaye, uske baad Russia is still making like record. So, it is still at... Uh, Three year high. So sanctions ka koi zada fayda nahi hua. So China says that it is concerned about the impact of Afghan policies on the women's rights. So recently, Afghanistan se, uh, ye news aayi thi ki the women, it, they would not be allowed to work for United Nations. So with time, restrictions on women's rights and freedom, we are seeing that they are being imposed by the current Afghan regime, which is the Taliban regime, and definitely that is not supported. So Pakistan gets closer to the IMF deal after UAE pledges $1 billion. So in this context, uh, our finance minister is there in USA to discuss. This is one of the most important agendas that is being uh, put forward by India is the debt vulnerability of the developing countries. 
सो so, इस कॉन्टेक्स में राइट नाउ करंट सिचुएशन में देखिए तो पाकिस्तान श्रीलंका बांग्लादेश दे आर द बेस्ट एग्जांपल्स बिकॉज दे आर सीकिंग हेल्प फ्रॉम आईएमएफ सो फ्रांस में हमें पता होना चाहिए कि वाई द पीपल दे आर ऑन रोड्स दे आर ऑन स्ट्रीट्स टू प्रोटेस्ट सो इन शॉर्ट एंड सिंपल टर्म अगर मैं आपको बताऊं तो इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द पेंशन रिफॉर्म्स जहाँ पे जो पेंशन जो पेंशन की एज है इट इज बेसिकली प्रपोज दैट इट वुड बी इंक्रीज एंड दैट्स वाई पीपल आर प्रोटेस्टिंग कि उनको और मतलब लॉन्गर टाइम पीरियड के लिए उनको और काम करना पड़ेगा बट इसके पीछे भी प्रॉपर लाइक like, अगर क्रिटिकली हम एनालाइज करें तो आपको चीजें समझ आएगी सो रिटायरमेंट एज को सिक्सटी फोर करने की बात की जा रही है राइट नाउ इट इज सिक्सटी टू सो चाइना इज नॉट टू सेल एनी आर्म्स इन द यूक्रेन वॉर सो बट लेट्स पीछे से भी पॉसिबिलिटी है एंड कि चाइना इनडायरेक्टली सपोर्ट कर सकते हैं बट बोलने की बात है सो जर्मनी फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर और जस्ट चाइना टू टेल रशियन एग्रेसर टू स्टॉप द वॉर इन यूक्रेन सो इसके बारे में मैंने कल बात करी थी कि हाउ इंडिया कैन प्ले ए रोल एंड वॉट रोल इंडिया कैन प्ले इन स्टॉपिंग इन ब्रिंगिंग पीस इन दिस रीजन स्टॉपिंग दिस वॉर सो चाइना स्टेज न्यूट्रल बट इट्स रेफ्यूजल टू कंटेम द इन्वेजन लीड्स टू एक्सेशन ऑफ साइडिंग विद रशिया सो वही है कि इनडायरेक्टली चाइना रशिया को सपोर्ट कर रहा है इन दिस वॉर क्योंकि चाइना ये बोल रहा है कि वी आर न्यूट्रल बट एट द सेम टाइम चाइना ने मतलब रशिया के जो एक्शन है कोई भी कंडेमनेशन कोई भी ऐसे स्टेटमेंट इशू नहीं किया है तो इट इज बेसिकली ये बिलीव किया जा रहा है कि चाइना इज इनडायरेक्टली इन अ वे इट इज सपोर्टिंग रशिया अंडरग्राउंड सो टेक्सटाइल्स एंड एपरल एक्सपोर्ट्स दे हैव डिक्लाइन बाय 14 परसेंट सो डेफिनेटली एक्सपोर्ट सेक्टर पे हमें इंपैक्ट दिख रहा है ऑफ द ग्लोबल इकोनॉमिक स्लो डाउन जो ग्लोबल डिमांड कम हो रही है इन्वेंट्री इंक्रीज हो रही है इम्पोर्ट्स इंक्रीज हो रहे हैं बट एक्सपोर्ट्स इंक्रीज नहीं हो रहे हैं so buyers they are resuming sourcing for their needs and trade members they have sought a policy that imposed no restriction on the raw materials so uh, inventory were the international buyers they already had the inventory and high cotton prices ye do main reasons the jiski wajah se we are seeing a decline in exports and apart from that segment contributed around 8% to the goods exports compared with 9.8% in the previous financial year last fiscal it was bad says the export promotion councils ed rajagopal while also pointing out ki march cotton textile exports they crossed 1 billion dollars lends hope for the future so let's see ki aane wale time mein how the exports they perform when we talking about the textile and the apparel sector so india's forex reserves they have increased and right now they stand at 584.75 billion dollars so that's there and the reserves they have been declining as the central bank deployed the kitty to defend the rupee amid the pressures caused by the global developments so global concerns ki wajah se we were seeing ki पिछले कुछ टाइम से जो हमारे फॉरेक्स रिजर्व्स थे दे वर डिक्लाइनिंग क्योंकि इट वाज आरबीआई व्हिच वाज सपोर्टिंग द इंडियन रुपी बिकॉज इंडियन रुपी वाज डेप्रिशिएटिंग अ लॉट सो इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिवेंट अ लॉट ऑफ डेप्रिसिएशन इट वाज आरबीआई इंटरवेंशन व्हिच वाज सप्लाइंग डॉलर इन द मार्केट एंड दैट्स हाउ इट वाज सपोर्टिंग द इंडियन रुपी एंड प्रिवेंटिंग इट फ्रॉम डेप्रिशिएटिंग मच सो दैट वाज द मेन रीजन व्हाई इंडियाज फॉरेक्स रिजर्व्स वर डिक्लाइनिंग बट राइट नाउ वी सी दैट दे हैव इंक्रीज्ड एंड दैट्स रियली गुड फॉर अस so g20 finance ministers they have discussed the debt distress and ukraine and other challenges so food and energy insecurity climate change recent risks to the financial stability were also discussed so these are some of the global challenges jo hum bol sakte hain and so debt distress of the poor and middle income countries ek challenge hai challenges to the global economy including russia ukraine war and a raft of issues from cryptocurrencies which risk transparency in the international taxation so these over the some of the issues that were discussed
सो इट इज इम्पोर्टेंट दैट वी कीप दम इन आर माइंड क्योंकि इंटरव्यू में ऐसे क्वेश्चन पूछे जा सकते हैं एंड या सो वी नीड टू हैव सिंपल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दीज so moving on to the financial express so rural demand revival ki wajah se we are seeing jo auto sector hai and fast moving consumer goods firms hai they are recording nice sales and imd forecast of the normal monsoon that also lifts the mood so rural sentiment it is definitely better and this may be because of a good harvest since last year monsoon was good so obviously iske wajah se farmers they are having good income so that's why they are demanding more and nse's cash turnover it dives 20% and it this is the sharpest decline in 11 years as option catch investor fancy so investment patterns they have saw they have seen a behavioral change in the financial year gone by with volatility in the markets unnerving unnerving the investors so obviously pichle saal humne dekha volatility bahut zyada thi volatility basically jo fluctuations hoti in the prices be it upward or down movement wo bahut zyada thi and that was also because we can see ki jo economic situation hai how things were changing so uske wajah se that was one of the factors and then obviously globally bhi impact ho raha hai kyunki we also have the foreign portfolio investors jo humne dekha that they were uh agar hum net mein baat kare to they were exiting from the indian market so uske wajah se volatility it remained high and we saw ki jo investors ke behavior mein change aaya that was also very a uh, different matlab there was a significant change in the behavior of the investors so cash turnover at the national stock exchange it dominates this segment it took a near 20% plunge so it declined and it was the sharpest in 11 years and bsc ka cash turnover it has declined by 23% so iske piche what is the reason so more and more investors they are gravitating towards the options trading which is a money spinner for the exchanges so this is the reason ki zyada se zyada investors they are now you know like shifting towards option trading option trading mein uh you have futures and options so these are derivative instruments so but thoda risky mana jata hai options ko but still they are uh, attracting investors more so that is the main reason ki uh, cash over to jo cash turnover hai usme decline dekhne ko mila in last year and nsc it also happens to practically hold a monopoly in the equity future and option segment so that's why nsc mein it has like dived by around a 20% so cash market is now being used as an investment mechanism rather than for trading so trading agar aapko karni hai in the capital market people are more using derivative uh, jo futures and options mein they are using them for trading kyunki usme thoda zyada possibility hai ki kam capital se aap profit zyada kama sakte ho whereas agar aap direct share khareed ke aap trade karna chahoge that is through equity to wo itna zyada like bol sakte rewarding nahi hai so ये कुछ फैक्टर हो सकते हैं कि पीपल ट्रेडिंग के लिए दे आर शिफ्टिंग टू फ्यूचर्स एंड ऑप्शंस बट व्हेन इट कम्स टू इन्वेस्टमेंट तो देन ओनली यू आर रिलाइंग ऑन द इक्विटीज ऑब्वियसली क्योंकि अगर आप इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हो तो दैट इज फॉर अ लॉन्ग टर्म पर्सपेक्टिव एंड फ्यूचर्स में आप मैक्सिमम तीन महीने के लिए इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हो सो दैट इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस so financial stability rbi governor says that indian banking and financial uh, financial system they remains completely insulated from the developments that have taken place in us and in switzerland so our banking system it is still resilient stable and healthy so this we have been talking about from a number of days and so finance minister says that g20 is in favor of the global crypto regulation 
So if all the countries would be on the same page regarding regulation of cryptocurrencies, so that would be making things a little more easier and synthesis paper on digital assets to be prepared soon. So Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana helps the poor save rupees 80,000 crores. So Jan Oshadi Kendras, they help the middle class save rupees 20,000 crores. So different schemes ke baare mein hume thoda pata hona chahi jo unke basic provisions hai. That would be helping us in the exam also. So we know that India is the world's largest and the biggest producer of milk and we imported dairy items last in 2011. So dairy items 2011 we import nahi kiye hai. and there have been reports of stagnation of the milk output. So this is iske biche ek reason ye bola ja hai, jo lumpy skin disease has uh, milk production pe impact hua. And some experts, they attribute the supply problems to COVID-induced sudden demand contraction. So, uski wajay se bhi, cheeze thodi mismatch hogi supply and demand mein because of COVID-19. But right now, abhi asa kuch nahi hai ki we'll be importing milk. So, livestock insurance scheme ke upar abhi baate ki ja rahi hai. And... The center, it has initiated the discussions with states to revamp the livestock insurance scheme being implemented on the National Livestock Mission for cattle population by virtually waiving of the premium of the farmers. So change which is done, which is the discussion is going on, that the premium is completely removed from the farmers who had to pay for it. And this insurance scheme, it is a part of the National Livestock Mission for the cattle population. And uh, cattle insurance, ke agar hum baat kare to, that is still very low in India because a uh, factor is that the farmers have higher premium pay karna padega, and obviously farmers' income has been cut. It was not so much in India, mein, and uske baad then climatic factors ke wajay se bhi harvest that is being uh, impacted. So, uske wajay se farmers they are not opting for the cattle insurance scheme. And coverage abhi 1% se bhi zyada nahi hai. So that is the situation. Coming to Indian Express and taking up only the important articles and the things that we have not done yet. So surgery to astronomy, ancient India knowledge, it gets the UGC push. So university and the college students, they may soon be encouraged to study plastic surgery as it is described in ancient Sanskrit text, Shushruta Samhita and Vedic astronomy. So plastic surgery mentioned ki gai hai in this ancient Sanskrit text of Shushrut Samhita and Vedic astronomy maybe. So basically Vedic astronomy bhi thodi or promote ki jayegi, encourage ki jayegi. So students of modern medicines will also be nudged to at least take up credit courses on the Indian systems of medicine, including Ayurveda and Siddha. So these proposals, they are part of the University Grants Commission's draft guidelines for incorporating Indian knowledge in the higher education curricula, which aims to help colleges and universities to develop the courses for introducing students to the Indian knowledge system. So Indian knowledge system, if we talk about our ancient India, se, when it comes to the knowledge that we have, be it of the Ayurveda or Siddha, and when we talk about the Ayush thing, so it is that, in simple terms, what do we mean by the Indian knowledge system? So besides a more comprehensive view of our country, 
as a knowledge based society studying and knowing about the indian knowledge system definitely students they will get understanding ki kaise uh we can connect that knowledge with the contemporary knowledge to find new perspectives on building sustainable healthcare system Coming to the editorials. So here, let's have a look. We'll only try to understand that. So trade data, it points to the slowing demand, global and domestic demand, and a steep decline in exports will weigh down the manufacturing sector. So obviously, if exports are very less, then the manufacturing sector will be direct impact. Hoga. And apart from that, where data is also provided to us, So recently, we have seen that merchandise and textile exports definitely have come hue hain. and electronic goods, they have registered expansion, significant expansion as have the rice exports, major segments, including labor intensive categories like gems and jewelry, cotton, man-made yarns, textiles, as well as engineering goods, they have seen lackluster performance. So electronic goods, we have a expansion and exports dekhne ko mila hai trade deficit bhi hamara uh, increase hua hai it has widened to dollar 267 billions a billion in 2022-23 and earlier it was 191 billion dollars in the previous financial year so trade deficit is also widening so imports bhi increase ho rahe hain exports kam ho rahe hain to uske wajah se also trade deficit is increasing But again, jo hamara strength hai, that is the services, trade services, exports. So services, may we have the surplus and it has been very strong. So wo thora hamara trade deficit kam karne mein bohat important role, role play karne wala hai. So fake news and IT amendment rules mein jo baat hi wo hum kar chuke hain. Coming to the world page. So freed prisoners, they exit a plane chartered by the International Committee of the Red Cross at Sana, which is in Yemen's capital. And amid talks to end the Yemen conflict, a swap of 900 war prisoners by both sides is underway. So we have seen that Saudi Arabia and Iran, they are trying, they are holding talks to end the conflict in Yemen. So why Supreme Court, it feels that paragraph numbers for judgments may help karne wale hai, they can be helpful. So Supreme Court has observed kiya hai that all the courts and tribunals as a matter of practice, they must adopt a uniform format in writing the judgments and orders. And this would be desirable to number all the paragraphs in orders. So paragraphs ko number karna would be helping uh, in future and so Obviously, helpful ki baat kare to we know ki jo judgments hoti hain, wo itni voluminous hoti hain and several volumes bhi hoti hain. So, so that malab chize thodi aur efficient ho jaye, number a paragraph kar doge to identify karna and usko like spot karna ki is paragraph mein this is there. So, that would be helping and yeah, so this is a small suggestion that has been provided by the court. 
So G20 and the Ukraine war. So India, which is keen to have the President Putin attend the summit, will find it difficult to accommodate Ukraine's request for an opportunity to address the G20. So Ukraine be address karna chata hai in the G20 summit and India wants ki Russia also attends the summit. So yahan pe thodi problems ho sakti hai and success of India's presidency, it will depend on its ability to carry the opposing sides to produce a consensus new Delhi leaders declaration so consensus hona ek bahut bada challenge hai aaj ke time mein and agar hum baat kare ki whether india would be a whether india would prove to be a successful presidency for g20 or not so wo is cheez pe definitely bahut zyada depend karega ki agar hum successfully ye ensure kar pate hain ki dono sides they attend the summit and sath hi sath there is consensus also so that would be pointing towards the successful presidency of India for G20 this year. So that is the G20 challenge we can say. So jo baki, uh, agar hum baat kare, analysis regarding this war we have seen uh, ki hamare liye jo important cheez hai ki India ka kya stand raha hai when it comes to Russia-Ukraine war and aane wale time mein kya possible changes karne chahiye that is also we have discussed a lot about this so in supreme court maternity benefits for adoptive mothers so supreme court has agreed to hear on 20th of april a challenge to the constitutional validity of section 5 of the maternity benefit act of 1961 which states he, a woman who legally adopts a child below the age of three months will be entitled to 12 weeks of maternity leave. So, this is regarding issue hai and this is regarding there is a petition. So, if a mother three months se below ka child adopt karti hai, so she would be entitled to 12 weeks of maternity leave. So, this is called the adoptive mothers also. And... So, it's saying that Section 5, this is what Section 5 speaks about. It's saying that it is like not constitutionally valid. So, right now, so this is a part of the Act. And so, commissioning mother, agar is term ka meaning samjhe, to it refers to a surrogate mother and it has been defined as a biological mother who uses her egg to create an embryo implanted in any other woman. So, PIL Boldri hai ki it is discriminatory and arbitrary towards the adoptive or surrogate mothers as it allows the biological mother's paid maternity leave for a much longer period of 26 weeks to look after children below the age of 3 months. So, this is why we are saying that surrogate or adoptive mothers are against it, are discriminatory. Ho jata hai, who actually you know, carry the child and give birth. So, let's see, Supreme Court, uh, what would be its judgment regarding this? So, for Sri Lanka's debt, India, Japan and France, they will launch a recast platform. And that would be to address the debt restructuring program of Sri Lanka. Because right now we know Sri Lanka is grappling with one of the worst economic crises. So, debt situation in Sri Lanka, Ghana, Zambia, Ethiopia, that were discussed. So, news mein toh mother dekh rahe hain ki Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh mein jo problems hai, but jo African countries hain, wahan pe bhi situation is not that good. So, Ghana, Zambia, Ethiopia, yahan pe bhi, they are suffering from economic crisis. So, Paris Club says, aims to start Sri Lanka debt negotiations. So, Paris Club of Creditor governments aims to start the negotiations to restructure Sri Lanka's debt and the Paris Club intends to keep the momentum and start the restructuring negotiations in coordination with all the relevant stakeholders. 
एंड या सो पेरिस क्लब के बारे में थोड़ा और फाइंड आउट कर सकती हो आई गेस इसके ऊपर ऑलरेडी क्वेश्चन पूछा जा चुका है and we are progressing ahead on india uk free trade agreement so that's all for today thank you so much for joining us and i hope ki jo bhi topics humne aaj samajhne ki koshish ki hai jo maine samjhane ki koshish kari aap logo ko samajh aa gaya hoga and there is also a pdf link that has been shared in the description box with you guys so do go through that also and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to our channel because it takes a lot of time and efforts in bringing these analysis videos for you guys and also hit the like button for each and every video that you see and you find it useful for yourselves thank you so much for joining with us